CCDP came about in 1993 and it was over a racial incident that took place in the area. And local people challenged people who were actually responsible for that and came together and formed a campaign called Muhaz Anti-Racism Campaign. And our focus was to get the communities together in the first instance and see what were the issues that they were experiencing and what they wanted the, the project to do for them. The Black Community Development Project is about building the capacity of the minority ethnic community in Greater Pilton. And encouraging more people to come forward and report incidents such as racial abuse and other forms of violence and abuse that they encountered. First of all, the structure for this morning is there to provide a service. A service to those people who need support and care on a social as, as well as economic level. <laughs> It's a good way of breaking down isolation. Families coming together, building relationships with other minority ethnic people. And also provide advice and information to black minority ethnic people, such as housing, education, health, employment. When we talk about the BCDP, there is no such project elsewhere which was established by white working class people to challenge racism. If racism is going to be challenged, it needs to include collaborative work with the indigenous white working class people. Maureen McMillan, who was one of the original local white members of the community who was against racism, and we miss her contribution greatly since she's passed away, and she basically steered the organization to where it is now. But also she fought for the cause for black and minority ethnic people. Moirin, could you tell us how the uh, Muir House anti-racist campaign started? Well, it started over an incident that happened to one family living in the area. Maria came from Botswana and was black, and the husband was Scottish, he was white. But I don't think it was because it was a mixed uh, family. I think the issue was certain members of the BNP didn't like black people, and the campaign was against Maria. Well, I've been living in uh, West Pilton for about five years now and I have experienced problems and my children have uh, experienced problems as well. We've had racist attacks, we had our cars, windows broken, children throwing stones at the door and the kids not being able to play out because they end up crying when they come in because kids have attacked them. I did have experienced a lot of racism in Broomhouse. It get to the stage I couldn't just take the children anywhere. We stuck in the house 24 hours. So I heard about the project and I heard how good they have activity on Sundays and I want to join them. The NEED survey in 1997, it allowed us to know the issues that affect the minority ethnic communities. Generally social issues like housing, health, community safety, policing. Local black and minority ethnic communities were isolated. The perception was that there are no many minority ethnic communities in this area. I was a local BCDP user. I didn't know of other families who I could visit or build relationships with, get to know about the local facilities that were in the area. There's a lot of resources in the area, a lot of facilities, but black minority ethnic people weren't using them. And that is the objective for BCDP. Just encouragement for you to get out of the isolation. I mean, Tess has got a range of experiences and he's obviously been an asylum seeker himself and has experienced similar issues to the communities up here. We have a um, caseworker who's recently been uh, in the post is Niru Patnagar. Jacinta Barker, who's a capacity development worker. I joined the organization in 1998, that was January, as an outreach development worker. 
and basically my role was to develop partnership or encourage partnership between two organizations and also to promote the works of the Black Community Development Project. And myself, who lived in the area at the time when I got involved in the uh, initial steering group, and now actually working for the organization. And it's been over 10 years that I've been here and I feel I've developed as a person as well through my involvement as a local resident who experienced similar issues to what communities are going through now and have been over the years. As an asylum seeker, I came to this country and what a shame, sometimes people think the asylum seekers are worth nothing. Asylum seekers actually came to this country with all their experience, with all the power in them, they want to do things and once I get the master of the language to master how to speak, Everything come back. When I sit in a management committee or a meeting, I understand exactly what they're talking about, what the roles, the funding. So all this huge experience, I'm bringing all this experience back here. Racism is a kind of big concern for us. So. Developing partnerships with local agencies like the police, North Edinburgh Area Renewal, the Education Department, other local voluntary organisations, social work, is an important aspect of our work. Because unless we come together, unless we put on the table the issues that the communities uh, within Pilton from minority communities are experiencing, we can't address the issues in isolation. To get the police involved and to, I would not say to force, but to work with the police, to get them to realize there is racism, is, is there. Because of the rampant uh, racial incidents being reported to us by minority ethnic parents, that the children are being racially abused, either in the school or on their way homes or something, that we decided to have uh, a campaign in relation to addressing racial incidents or promoting anti-racist work in the different schools involved involving uh, Royston and Granton primary schools and also the youth group in the area and the community centers. Majority of the problems presented to us by black parents are within the Royston, Wardiburn and Granton areas. That's when we decided to create a huge impact in the community. We should do a long-term project. Although the abuse were majority perpetrated by young people, we would try to target almost everybody in the community because obviously that behavior is learned from adults. Royston and Brandon Primary School um, has initiated the anti-racist education seen with, since their participation in the anti-racist work that we did in the area. The BCDP is quite good in getting the information from the local community because we conduct surveys, we do our evaluation on a regular basis. We are able to identify the needs or the gaps in the way we provide the services. And uh, so it's easy for us to organize different activities to, to meet the needs that's already been identified by the service users. There was an initial survey carried out in 1997 and we now carried out another one to update our data and information and this was in 2002 and we identified that there was a lot of issues around men's uh, gap in services basically for men and there were underlying issues that we weren't addressing and most of these were coming from men themselves and this is a result of working uh, long hours on social hours trying to meet demands of their families and raise their families. There are a lot of uh, issues such as mental health issues but also they struggle and barriers to finding suitable employment, overcome their isolation and experiences of living away from home in an, an area where it's, you know, there's a lot of deprivation. About our passports. Right, you can't enter the UK with that passport. So we managed to get a number of people from the African community and also those who are already been involved in the organization. We asked them whether they know of somebody who have just moved in in the community. And because we know that there are issues in terms of employment and we know that we have a very strong legislation at the moment, you know, the Race Relations Amendment Act 2000. And because they're new in the country, they don't know anything about these acts. And most of the time when they came, they were not given proper induction by the hospital or by the, uh, by the um, nursing homes. So no proper induction, no proper orientation, no um, proper accommodation after having promised that they're going to have 
all the benefits that you can think of. We'll provide them to you when you get to the UK. But a few months or weeks after they arrived, they would find out that there's no accommodation provided to them, so they will have to take time off work. And some of them were housed in a hotel, where in they're forced to pay for their own accommodation. And um, again, the signing of new contract, minus the benefits that was promised to them prior to coming here. So we, we brought somebody from the Commission for Racial Equality to talk about the Race Relations Amendment Act 2000. And that helped them a lot because half the time, um, people are not aware of their rights and entitlement and we need to inform them because that's the only way that they can start asking questions and feeling confident you know, about their own rights in this country. I think it's very important to work with children, young people, and it's at that stage that we need to change attitudes. We place a, a lot of focus on children and young people and Lynn takes the lead for doing youth and children's work. In this area, unfortunately, there is still quite a lot of racism. We actually collect the young people in the minibus from all over the area and bring them here. That's one of the ways that we can break down these barriers. Our activities are educational, but at the same time in a really informal way, so they're having fun. It's like the mask making. It's partly making masks of herself. At the same time, nosy. we're looking at skin colours. Nosy, nosy, cheeky, cheeky. What's under that? <laughs> I am sure if we keep the good work, if we keep teaching the new generation about how to be one community, how to be a multicultural people, we do eat multiculturally, so we have to think multiculturally. For the BCDP in the future, we need to concentrate on keeping up what we have been doing. So far, that is building the capacity of the minority ethnic community. People have developed in terms of getting to know what's around and they don't feel so alone now. Some people have attended colleges and got jobs because of this. That didn't exist before. They were on their own, basically, in a socially deprived area, fearing racism, fearing problems. We need to focus on including the white working class people in our service and the challenging poverty, which is our common enemy. Then other issues of marginalization can be challenged collectively. What we would like to achieve is to continue what we're doing and, and strengthen and develop um, what we have started here and also to develop more work in other parts of Scotland if, that is what, if people will allow us to do that and uh, to continue getting the support that we have been getting from various organizations and agencies and politicians who have helped us over the years. It's been a kind of a learning curve for us by working just first locally but then now applying this uh, good practice uh, citywide. We've been here in this community for 10 years, you know, this is our anniversary and uh, we've achieved so much and I think it's, it's about time for us to share uh, this information or this knowledge and expertise that we have developed or cultivated in this community. It's like a, a, a lifesaver for me because from my experience it took me a long time, long enough time to discover the project. So I don't want that to happen to anybody who needs our service. I think we should reach out for them. And this is why I see we will be successful if we go citywide. We have a lot of people that we need to thank who have contributed to the success of this project over the years and it's mainly contribution from the local people themselves. We as professionals are delivering a service but it's the local people who have made this project a success. And I think working together is the only way forward. <laughs> <laughs>